Back with us on the conversation, speaking with political activist Karen Cross, long-standing member of the PNP. She says she'll be a comrade until the day she draws her last breath. But she has a little bit of trouble, you know, because she has been expelled by the leadership of the party. Although she can appeal that, we're going to come to that. And she's here talking to me about her time in the PNP and assessing the party through the various stages that she has been a member all right, so we've dealt with uh, Michael Manley and mm. Percival James Patterson. Let's mm. come forward now to the woman who took over from PJ Patterson to be mm. the first woman president mm. of the PNP, Mrs. Simpson Miller. What was le what, well, what was the party like as a unit, cohesive or otherwise, under your leadership through your eyes? Um, Portia was um, heading to being leader for a very long time. After that, failed bid in 92 against... Um, PJ and after, if you might go back, after she PJ won in '92, nobody brought the party together better than PJ and Portia together. Mm -hmm. It was the two of them, the yes. two rivals, because after it was over, it was PJ who went all out to reach out to Portia and her supporters, and Portia ride with that and brought the forces together. I can't say we're hundred percent. But we certainly was in a much, much stronger and better position with the two of them. And when Portia became leader, it was what the PMP needed at the time mm -hmm. and what Jamaica needed at the time. Mm -hmm. Jamaica was dying to see a female prime minister, dying to see a female leader of a political party. And um, that happened. And when it happened, the place was elated. Mm. And I mean, Portia was the kind of leader that drums up support, that children wants to talk to, mm -hmm. that young people wants to meet, that um, leaders across the world and, and the diaspora wanted to have conversation yes. with. Um, um, cabin leaders want to be close to Portia, yes. to hear her speak, to, to be in her space, you know. And Portia, as far as I know, when we were younger, used to be up and down in the campaign trail with Portia. Yes. Portia was never a divisive figure. Yes. She had her political beliefs and she had her supporters and there were people who were against Portia and people who were for Portia. And, but during all of that, Portia never fight anyone. Mm -hmm. She took a political stance and she would support somebody, but Portia was a unifier in every sense of the word. Yes. Nobody can contradict that. Nobody can, can even come close to even suggest otherwise. So it was great to have Portia as leader. I would say that the leadership style was um, a little bit out of the ordinary. It was yeah. new. It was different, but new and different is not bad all the time. And um, I think most people around, around, around Portia facilitated a unifying party, party, party flank, and it worked. But, 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 you know, so your verdict then, looking back on the time Mrs. Simpson has spent at the helm of the party, mm. and, and, I, and, and I use verdict because guess what? Mm. History will probably show, Karen mm -hmm. Cross, that things started falling apart in terms of party unity. Under heel leadership. Chino mm -hmm. Achebe said the center can't hold in his famous novel of the same name. Mm -hmm. Things fall apart. The mm -hmm. center didn't quite hold mm -hmm. under Mrs. Simpson Miller. Mm -hmm. What about the disintegration of the vaunted PNP structure and unity that happened under Mrs. Simpson Miller's watch, if you agree that it did happen there, mm -hmm. that was caused by her quality and style of leadership? Yeah, there was some pushback about her quality and style of, of leadership. And there was a little bit of um, um, disunity, so to speak, in the, in, in the middle of it. But I want to point out something, that this is a political party. It's a political party with different ideas, mm. different voices, different people who operate differently. Yes. There's always a lot of voices as to how things should go, yes. as to who should do what and what should be done. And um, I think there was a little bit of looseness from the leadership point of view, that allowed um, all of this difference in of I differences of ideas and differences of approach to seep in and cause a little bit of a, a scatter, a scattered um, thing. So there was a whole part that going on behind the scene because there was that little gap that 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 was created as a result of some people wanting to uh, manipulate and you know that kind but, of. What question thing. for you? In mm. the same way mm. that. Michael Manley, I mean, 
anybody from any walk of life in Jamaica, and, and regardless of which party you support, you have to mm. respect Michael Manley. He was mm. no ordinary man. No, he wasn't. Michael Manley was undoubtedly, he was many things, but he was also an intellectual leader, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Percival James Patterson, Queen's Council, highly intelligent man, was also an intellectual leader, along with mm. being leader, a leader of other kinds, mm -hmm. a leader with other strengths, outstanding mm -hmm. characteristics. Mm -hmm. Could it be that the PNP under Mrs. Simpson Miller, things started to fall apart because you did not have in her this intellectual leader at the helm of the party that the party is used to. And so this respect for the leader intellectually and the things which flow from it, Mrs. Simpson Miller didn't get the benefit of that because she wasn't that kind of person and that this caused some of the disintegration that we saw. What would you say to that? I resent that completely. Mm. Believe me, I, yes. I resent that. I resent yes. that from the beginning. I still resent yes. it. Yes. Because the, the, the patriarchy have this thing in their minds yes. that there is a certain level of education and mm. intellect that is required for somebody to actually lead something. Mm -hmm. Throughout history, we have proved, history already proved that a hundred times that, that is not exactly true. Mm. Yes. But Portia got a pushback, a kind of pushback from that intellectual class that no other person would have gotten, be it a man who would have had the level of education that, P, that, that Portia had, that kind of pushback and that kind of stain would not but have been you're, you're, But you're agreeing with the point then, Karen. I am agreeing with the point, but I'm thing. saying... But hold on, no. you're agreeing with the point, because here's the thing. Remember, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting forward to you a perception, and you're agreeing that there are some people who probably perceived this and believed this, I am. and that's why they push back at her. I am. But you're just saying that it was pure perception and not reality is what you're arguing. I'm getting to my point. There I don't you know if I'm arguing that it was pure perception yes. and not reality, but I'm arguing that the pushback that Portia got for not being a Harvard-educated wench was fierce yes. and aggressive, yes. and it came primarily from the patriarchy, yes. the so-called educated In the party. Patriarchy. In the party. Mm. But there was also a pushback from outside of the party, who was influencing those inside of the party. Yes. And that's where the PMP started failing, because that is where the grassroots people in the PMP and the voters of the PMP saw the blatant and total disrespect of one of their own. Yes. And that's when feelings started. But we started losing the voters from then. Yes. Once that became a, a narrative um, on, on the road and in communities, voters started to flee the PMP and think that there, there, there's just an, an, an organization of obnoxious middle class um, brown men who just don't think Portia, Portia cut it. And the, the, the thing that damages the PMP most is that we could go back and say, under PJ or a Michael Manley leadership, um, that would have been recognized and dealt with. Yes. But it was never recognized and dealt with internally. Yes. Um, the Porsche people were pushing back in, in ways that never helped her. You know, and the other people, the intellectual class, the educated class, was, was pushing back in, in, in sexist ways. You know, yeah. they, they were sexist, they were misogynist. I mean, they were just behaving in some real bad way towards... Portia Simpson's leadership. So, so saying all of and that. And we lost voters. Yes. It was from then we yes. started losing voters. So, so saying all of this, all of what you've just said, mm. would that be represented, the, 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 the misogyny, the sexism, the blatant disres dis disrespect mm. uh, shown to her by mm. intellectuals, would you say that this is represented by the leadership challenge? from Dr. Peter Phillips. Not saying that Dr. Phillips is all these mm. things or any of those things, mm. but that the fact of him challenging in the way that he did when this had never happened in the PNP before, mm -hmm. in the party, mm. that this represented what you're talking about, uh, uh, about the kind of pushback to someone like Mrs. Simpson Miller leading a vehicle such as the PNP. That, that second challenge from Dr. Phillips yes. in 08 yes. was unfortunate um, and untimely. And, um, because there was this notion that once a party leader loses an election, there, is, um, um, there should be presented a challenge when there was no evidence to, to say that the loss of the election was singularly that of the party leader um, and, and the party leader's popularity. Especially that, that when you consider that the party leader, the same party leader, 
had what, what it was agreed that she was the reason that you had won yeah, in yeah, uh, October 28, yeah, 2011. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what they never well, saw... December 28, 2011, yeah, yes. what, what they never saw, what that intellectual class and some of them in there never saw and still don't see, yes. is that it's from then the voters started to leave us. Mm -hmm. And people were so focused on challenges and leadership and ambitions that nobody noticed that the people who matter were leaving us in droves. And by the time they come to that reali realization, it was too late. Yes. So after that challenge, Portia's got, Portia got her, her, her metal, her woman. She, Portia just rise up, you know, yes. she rose up like a, like a phoenix. Yes. And Portia just dig in and went back to the people. And the people say, yes, Mama P. Yes. And that's how we won back in, in, in hindsight, though, mm. having the benefit now, Karen Cross, mm. of having seen the Sims Miller leadership, mm -hmm. the electoral defeat to Andrew Holness, the, the win over Andrew Holness before she won it, she lost against him. Mm. Would you say the Sims Miller presidency of the PNP was a success? It was. How? I would. How? I would. We motivated people. Nobody motivated the PMP base like Portia. We have not had that since. So yes, we lost the election, and there were a lot of variables that could be contributed um, to that loss. And, and we can always go back and cherry pick things and pick out things as to why we lost and how we lost and who was responsible for it. But one fact remained, and that is the PMP base showed up for the PMP under Portia Simpson Miller. Yeah. Dr. Peter Phillips, his leadership of the PNP, how do you assess it, success or failure? Dr. Peter Phillips never spent a lot of time. It's very difficult to um, um, assess his leadership, but for the time, but if I was to assess Dr. Peter Phillips, I would start assessing him from the moment he became General Secretary of the People's National Party. That's a long time. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's where we should start. We shouldn't, we shouldn't judge a person's success by a year or two, although we should. Yes. We should. Yes. But and that's, we, why we, that's what we are doing. Yeah, but we also should look mm. at their contribution yeah. before but, but that hold on, in but, other but, positions. But I'm suggesting to you, though, mm. Karen, that that's a different question, because here's the thing. Mm. There, there, there is time to run the rule over Dr. Phillips' contribution to the PNP right. as a member. All right, I and, give you and, that. And I give that, you that. I give you that. Good, I give you that. That, I give that's it. exemplary. I give you that. I give so you I'm that. talking mm. about the man in charge of the levers of power. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, we have enough meat on the bone mm -hmm. to be able to make a stew out of that. <laughs> I'm saying, mm -hmm. was it success, failure in between the time Peter Phillips leading the party? I'm talking about the party, taking care of party business, mm. solidifying the party, unity of purpose, fixity of purpose, evaluate the status of those things under mm. Peter Phillips' hand. Mm -hmm. Dr. Peter Phillips' hand. I think Comrade Peter Phillips made a, um, a good attempt at trying to bring the forces together in the party. I think he was up against too much variables, too, ma too many things were an obstacle for him to really have an impact as a cohesive and, 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 and um, unifying leader. A number of things happened that um, he just couldn't dig himself from under some things. The, the East Portland by-election by um, came, the choice of, of, of candidate, the, 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 all of those things added up to how he acted afterwards. And it seems to me, and I'm, being, I'm going to be very, very honest with you, but it seems to me that Dr. Phillips had lacked some will, mm. some political will to shake the tree and see what falls off. I think he lacked some of the political will that was needed to say to people, come now, come, okay, sit down now and see if we can work this out. So it was will, but, not skill? He had the skill, man, but I think it was political will. Mm. He has the skill. He has proven that over the years. Um, as general secretary of the party, as as um, policy review man, and all of that. Then Karen but I Cross, think he, he lost had the skill, will. But, but if he had the skill, Karen, mm -hmm. why is it that Peter Bunting challenged that the time he did, mm -hmm. knowing that an election was uh, on, in, in, in the headwinds? If he had the skill, because guess what? The Bunting challenge was an admission by the Bunting camp, rise, that no, we don't have the skill at the leader, at the level of party leader, to be able to whip this PNP into shape and provide a credible alternative for the people of, well, a credible selection for the people mm. of Jamaica mm. in, in, at a general election. Mm. So let us put me, let us work to put me in because I have the skill, the incumbent doesn't. That was mm. Peter Bunting's verdict.
And I supported Peter Bunting back, I know you did. back in, in 2019. Yes. But that was not what Peter Bunting thing was about, we discovered but, afterwards. That oh, was not about... Afterwards. Yeah, it, that, that, it, it was not about... He put on, it, Peter Bunting put on a great show to convince a, a, a great many of people and comrades that he was a credible and good alternative. And the man with more skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he did. He, yeah, but we find out afterwards that he, he's not all that skilled about anything. But let us not um, go into that. That challenge was untimely mm. as well. I supported um, Peter Bunting on the notion that, yes, we need a revitalization. Yes. We need something to prop it up and big it up and build it up. And he came with it. He came with the, with the dazzles and the razzle dazzle. And he came with the whole of excitement and the social media thing. Yeah. And, the, you know, he came with that. Yeah. So we bought into that. But all in all, you're saying it was bad for the people. Of course it was. We, we, we just it stay was. right there. It we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're halfway through uh, this conversation with Karen Cross. And yes, we are getting to talk about her direct activities in the PNP that have caused her to now be an ex-member. Here you are. <laughs> I'm not an ex-member.